Yo, what's up guys, Kevin here. In this video, I wanna to talk to you guys about the biggest mistakes beginner snowboarders uh, make and then how to avoid those mistakes. Um, I've been teaching snowboarding for many years, probably taught thousands of people um, from the beginner level, so I've seen pretty much every mistake out there, but I really just wanna focus on the most common ones and talk to you guys about them uh, to help you avoid them. Um, and this video I think will even help somebody if you're not a beginner and you're gonna teach your friend or family member to snowboard, uh, this can be I think really helpful because there's some things that just keep coming up over and over again as a beginner and uh, yeah, hopefully I can help you guys avoid those. Um, I'm also doing this video live, so down in the chat we have everyone talking, so if you guys have any questions for me, I can answer them in a little bit. But quick shout out to Bad Riders, to uh, Cash, to PS4 Live, to VR Guitar, to Caleb, Spence. Thank you guys all for tuning in. And yeah, let's uh, get into it. Um, also, a couple other special announcements will be in this video too. So I'm stoked to uh, uh, hang around till the end because I've got two, two special announcements I'm looking forward to. Um, but first things first, when you're going to the mountain, one of the most common th mistakes that I see is people coming in without their snowboards properly set up. Um, so if you can arrive at the mountain on your first day of riding with your board set up properly, then that's going to get get you off to an amazing start. And I think the best thing for a beginner snowboarder, um, first, maybe check out a video on how to ch set up your snowboard. But a few things, a few key things to remember is that your stance width, width should be a little bit wider than your shoulders. Uh, and then also have your bindings set a little bit towards the tail of your snowboard. So when you're going to make those first turns as a beginner, you wanna have the tail, your, a smaller tail and bigger nose of the board. So that makes turning so much easier, your first couple turns having your bindings set towards your tail. Um, if you don't know which direction you're riding in, the easy way to figure that out is your front foot uh, snowboarding is gonna be the same foot that you would like run and slide across, say like a slippery floor or some ice. Whatever foot you put out first when sliding on your feet would be the same one you would uh, put first when sliding on your snowboard. Um, so that's uh, one thing to remember. Another thing with setting up your your snowboard is to actually, the high backs on your bindings, um, it's important to set those forward as well. Because when you're learning to stop for the very first time, you're using the back of your bindings to help you to do that. And by setting those high backs, um, if they say on a scale of one to six, um, at about a three or a four, that's really gonna help you when learning to stop. So sometimes the biggest, problems I've seen is people coming with their high backs set to zero, uh, their stances set maybe backwards or just completely wrong. So if you guys can dial all that, all those things in first, that's going to help you like learn so much faster. Um, the next thing to do um, is to just go through the basics beginner steps. And if you guys don't know what they are, I've got a uh, the beginner playlist in the description where you can check out um, the first 10 steps to learn to snowboard. Um, but one mistake I see new snowboarders make is trying to learn too much too quickly. So take your time learning. Um, if there's 10 skills to learn, maybe just think of like set yourself a goal of learning the first like two or three. Then you can learn, take your time, uh, master each one before moving on to the next because when you're learning to snowboard, you're gonna have a couple falls um, and it's gonna take some time. And the more time um, you can spend actually just getting good at some of those beginner stages, then you're gonna feel like you're actually moving on your snowboard, uh, progressing, and before trying to learn the next step, just like have fun and enjoy the process of learning the first few. So I would say that's the next thing is just trying to advance too quickly. It can actually make you know, learning to snowboard, uh, no fun. And it can also just um, set you up too for an injury if you're just trying too much too quickly. So just take your time and really like enjoy the process. Uh, the next beginner mistake that I see most commonly made 
is when you're learning to stop, uh, one of the most common ways to stop is on your heels. So you learn to like slide on your heels and use the edges on the heel side of your snowboard. And sometimes people get really comfortable on, on their heels and then they forget to learn to slide on the toe edge of their snowboard. And snowboarding is actually like kind of 50-50 heel side and toe side. Uh, but when you're first learning the heel side, it feels a lot easier because you're sliding down, you can see everything in front of you and heels can actually be like a lot of fun. But if you get stuck on your heels then you're only learning 50% of snowboarding. So make, make it a priority to spend the other half of the time on your, the toe edge of your snowboard sliding on your toes. And if you try to do it 50-50 as much as possible, then you're gonna become a much more well-rounded snowboarder. And when you go to learn to turn, you're gonna, you're gonna learn to turn much quicker. So take the time, do 50-50, heels and toes. Um, so I hope a few of those help. I'll get into a few more. Let's take a break and see if there's any questions in the live chat. Um, shout out to Jose Bortista, to Frost, to Blake, thank you guys for hopping on. Um, Luke, awesome, Luke the Moose. Uh, Quinn, Kat, awesome, thank you guys so much for hopping on. Um, but yeah, into the next, into the next uh, mistake that I see that uh, happens is um, when you're going to learn to turn, um, it's a good idea to actually get someone to hold your hand for the first couple turns. And I know sometimes when you have a friend teaching you or maybe like um, like somebody from your family, it can kind of be overwhelming with somebody teaching you because they want you to learn like so badly. Um, but if you like kind of just get, just get them to like uh, not try to over teach you like uh, by telling you instructions, but by just actually holding your hand for a, the first few turns, it can help you make those turns. And yeah, Almost every student that I've taught, um, once they learn their heels and once they learn their toes, just like holding their hand for those first couple actual turns um, helps them to get that sorted out. So um, find somebody if you can as a beginner um, and just even if you're like a grown man who maybe doesn't want to hold somebody's hand, it's like it's really going to help you to get your first few turns down. So don't be afraid of it. Definitely find a friend to, uh, to hold your hand. Um, oh, and then this one is actually the last, the last one on my mind. I'll let you know if I have any more, but this one I think is the most important. This is, I'm going to say this is the biggest mistake in beginner snowboarding, and that is trying to learn on a slope that is too flat. So in snowboarding, you, you need like a bit of a slope to actually help you to learn. So sometimes, you know, when you see a hill, it can seem scary and so you avoid that and you go to the flattest part of the mountain. But the analogy I would use is trying to snowboard on the flattest part is kind of like trying to ride a bicycle very slowly. So when you're trying to ride a bike with no speed, it's hard to keep your balance. Um, and it's just like a snowboard. When you're trying to learn and it's like completely flat, it makes it very, very difficult to to, to like slide on your edges to make your first turn. So find some place, even if it's some place where you, you have to just like hike up and walk, uh, but find a place where you can um, have a slope where you can actually slide down that has like an actual pitch to it. That's just gonna make learning to stop so much easier, learning to slide, and even learning to do your first turns so much easier. Um, one of the biggest places where I see people fall is when a slope actually gets flat. That's like when I was a beginner, the, one of the hardest places that I found to snowboard was when the slope got flat because there's, it's harder to use your edges when, when the slope is flat. So um, I think that's maybe the biggest mistake in snowboarding. Maybe let me know what your guys' thoughts are. But yeah, try to learn where there is a, a somewhat of a slope. Um, but yeah, that's, uh, that's a few of them. Let's see what people are saying in the comments. If you guys have any beginner questions, if you, if you are a beginner or if you are gonna teach a friend, it's, uh, it's great to hear from you guys. Um, 
Evchamo2 says, trying to snowboard on the flattest part is like trying to ride a bike with no speed. Yes, sir. Great analogy. <laughs> awesome. Thanks, man. Uh, Erica says, I understand that. Nice. Um, Kara says, sometimes rentals can be a pain, but I find the service at Whistler are really good. Uh, especially last year, they let me have the first ride on a brand new board. Awesome. And a pair of boots. Oh yeah, that's amazing. Um, yeah, that's like a, that's some good, actually a good point there too. Like when you're first starting out, it can be good to, to rent your gear just to try it out. Uh, but even then it's good idea to like, make sure when you're getting that rental board to make sure that it's like set up properly. So ask the person at the rental place, if your high backs are tilted forward and your board is set up in the right direction and that's, and it's a good setup for you. Uh, Patrick says tips for teaching kids. Uh, Patrick. Yeah. Really awesome question, man. I think with kids, like the most important thing is that it's like fun that you're, that you're not trying to explain too much to them. Maybe just giving them like very like, uh, brief explanations and very simple. But my experience is with kids, they just want to do it and they want to learn by doing, um, most kids I would say. So just like getting them out, um, to a place that's like uh, safe and easy for them where they can just like ride and have fun. Even if they're just like working on one thing, like sliding on their heels, um, a lot of kids will just have fun doing that for, for hours and hours. And you may need to like guide them to say like, hey, like let's try sliding on our toes for a while. And sometimes kids, like if they're really young, they don't understand like why they need to try something different. But if you just like suggest something to them and maybe make it like a part of a game or something fun, then they'll like try, they'll try doing it. Um, especially if I find that if you show them the example, um, a lot of times kids like they'll, they'll want to do like what you're doing. So if you're sliding on your toes and the kid sees that, maybe then he'll try to do it too. So um, keeping it very simple explanations and just making it fun for them. All right. Yeah. A couple of really good questions there. Uh, Kara says, I have a kind of weird situation that I don't know how I've gotten it myself into. Basically, I think I used to be regular because I learned to snowboard regular five to six years ago, but I'm goofy on my skateboard. Um, yeah, that's, that's actually pretty common. I have a friend, a couple of friends actually that snowboard, um, regular and then skateboard goofy and vice versa. So I think that's pretty normal. I don't know why that would be, but I think, uh, I think it's normal. I wouldn't worry too much about it. All right. Let's see if there's any more beginner questions. Uh, Chi Ming says trying to teach my friend a skier. How, how do I get him to decide on regular or goofy? Yeah. So if you have, um, a friend who skis, that's, um, you know, that's, that's actually pretty, that's pretty good because coming from skiing, you, you kind of know the mountain already and how things work, but if they need to figure out regular or goofy, like, I think the biggest thing is to like, uh, run and then slide across some snow or ice, um, and then just see which foot they put out first. I think that's like, it's probably the best way because you're, yeah, whichever foot you put out first to slide is going to be the same one on your snowboard. Um, or you can do the trick where you like go behind them and give them a push and see which foot they put out first. And that would be their front foot. Um, but yeah, give, give that a try. And, um, the most, uh, common mistake with skiers getting into snowboarding is in skiing. They typically want to always be facing like to the bottom of the hill and so in skiing, they take that over to snowboarding and they, they try to like snowboard like a skier. So they have to like kind of get out of that habit of always facing their chest to the bottom. And when they're on their toes, uh, getting them to face their chest to the top of the, to the top of the mountain. And, um, yeah, once you kind of get over that hurdle, I feel like skiers catch on pretty quick, but, um, that's, that's one thing to keep in mind when teaching your friend. Um, uh, awesome. So one, Announcement, I think I can, I'll can. i make it now, is that uh, Snowboard Pro Camp beanies are back in stock. 
So if you guys want a Snowboard Pro Camp beanie, there's a link to them in the description. And they've been out of stock almost the entire like summer and from last spring. So I've actually got the box. I don't think I can lift it, but you guys can kind of see it. But there's a massive box here. And so yeah, fresh Snowboard Pro Camp beanies. Um, I've, gotten, I've got 200, but I'm only going to sell 180 uh, because I want to keep about 20 just to like give away to people. So yeah, if you guys are interested, uh, link in the, in the description and a very like limited quantity. Um, so yeah, hope you guys will check out a Snowboard Pro Camp beanie. And I think that these are actually the best quality ones yet. Um, so like for me, I like to wear my beanie under my helmet. So this beanie is not too thick, um, but it's also not too thin. It's like a sort of like a mid weight beanie, kind of just like just in the middle. Um, so yeah, it's not like gonna be too warm, but it's also not gonna be uh, cool either. Um, so yeah, this is, for me, this is the perfect beanie. I've been trying to dial it in. And this one is for sure like the one I've been most pleased with. So yeah, I think, um, yeah, this is, uh, I'm really stoked on these. Even the quality, for whatever reason, has actually, I think, improved over the last uh, batch of beanies. So if you guys want to rep Snowboard Pro Camp this winter, um, there's 180. And uh, yeah, they just, just came in today. So I wanted to uh, announce that. And if you guys are curious if they're going to come in for Christmas, I don't think that the shipping will make it there in time for Christmas Day. Um, but yeah, get your hands on one of these before they're gone. But uh, yeah, thanks for everyone who was um, asking about these beanies too. So they just came in today. Awesome. All right. <laughs> Uh, so PK, PK Blade saying, I'm going to try learning snowboarding for the first time this weekend. Any tips to make my learning experience better? Um, awesome. PK Blade, this video is for you, 100%. Um, yeah, so quick overview. First, like, yeah, show up, have your snowboard, like, all set up, ready to go. Um, if you're renting, make sure that, yeah, the rental looks good. Uh, maybe check out, I've got a few videos on the channel about setting up your board, so check those out. And yeah, take your time when learning, like start somewhere easy, start with the basics. Um, yeah, the beginner snowboard playlist is in the description, but uh, there's videos that take you through. So the first step is to actually just put one, uh, strap one foot into your board and practice like walking around with one foot strapped in. And that's just like how you get to and from the chairlift. Uh, the next step is to practice actually doing one foot just and riding with one foot down like a very like mellow pitch to where it flattens out. And that's how you practice for getting on and off the chairlift. So really good practice just doing some one foot skating and then some one foot riding um, just in some place that's very mellow. And take your time learning these steps because you know, you, Learning to snowboard, it may take you a few days. Um, but yeah, and then find like a place where you can learn to do learn to do your heel slide. So you're sliding on your heels and that's kind of like the first way uh, to stop is to just sliding on your heels, then practice sliding on your toes. Then once you can, you can do both of those, you can start linking together or trying your first turns. And yeah, it's important practice 50, like evenly your heel sliding and your toe sliding. Um, and then when you're going for your first turns, get somebody to like hold your hand through those first couple of turns. But yeah, take your time, enjoy it, uh, learn at your own pace, and like be safe. Oh, one thing I one thing I missed uh, I forgot. Uh, one of the biggest mistakes. I'm glad that I've stayed on here with you guys to talk a bit longer. But uh, is like is forgetting to wear some of the safety gear. So as a beginner, like 100%, you should be wearing a helmet. That's like maybe the easiest one. Um, pretty much everyone in snowboarding wears a helmet now, so uh, definitely get yourself a good, well-fitting helmet. Um, but also, as a beginner, I think the most common injury is, uh, is your wrist. So pick up a set of wrist guards. So wrist guards will really help you. Um, in all my years of, snowboard of teaching snowboarding, I like really tried 
to avoid as much as possible any students from getting hurt. But when it would happen and it would like on a very rare occasion, it would like most often be a wrist injury, just somebody falling over, uh, putting their hands out and hurting their wrist. So definitely pick up a pair of wrist um, guards. Um, and once you get a bit more advanced, like more advanced riders, I feel like wrist injuries are less common, but for beginners, it's like, it's very common. So, um, and then if you do fall, and this is another, goes into another uh, mistake that can be avoided, is try to fall and fall onto your like uh, forearms. So don't fall with your hands straight out, try to fall onto your, onto your forearms, and that kind of helps um, avoid the wrist injuries. Um, and then another piece of prote uh, protective gear that you can wear is impact shorts. And impact shorts, another one that's huge for beginners, and impact shorts will have some extra padding right where your tailbone is, so that if you do happen to go backwards, um, the impact shorts will protect your tailbone. So that one is a huge one as well. Um, I think the tailbone is not as much an injury, but just like a nagging, painful place to fall. So if you can wear impact shorts, that will like help you avoid all that. Um, even for myself, when I'm riding in the terrain park, I always wear impact shorts just in case I happen to hit my tailbone. So helmet, wrist guards, impact shorts, and, and you'll be good, man. All right. Let's do, uh, let's do a few more questions. Thank you guys for tuning in. We got over 200 people watching. Felix wants to know how's everyone's day going. Awesome, man. Yeah, today was a today was an awesome day. Just been been chilling here in Whistler. Oh, awesome. Nicholas says, I hope everyone orders a beanie. Best way to support Kevin and his channel. Awesome. Thanks, Nicholas. Appreciate it. Ryan says, Hey Kevin, I just got the same headspace you, you used last season. I so love it. It's awesome. Thanks. Amazing, man. Yeah, I'm glad that yeah, that you're stoked on the board recommendation. All right. Tanner says, "Hey man, I'm wanting to start park, but my board is very stiff. It's got like a 6 to 7 flex rating. Should it be okay?" Um yeah, so for park riding, I think if you're new to park riding, it is better to have a softer snowboard. It's just gonna be more forgiving um, if you wanna learn presses and also a board that has some rocker in it too because that rocker will actually make it more forgiving when riding through the park. Like a stiff camber board can actually be a little bit more catchy than a softer rocker board. So um, yeah, if you can, I would, I would say Go for a softer board that maybe has some rocker in it. And that actually goes, the same The same thing goes for beginners. Uh, when you're first learning to snowboard, um, the kind of snowboard you wanna look for is a board um, that is a softer flex. It's just gonna be easier to kind of um, maneuver and, and put some like pressure into. And also a board that has what's called rocker towards the tips, so the board actually like rises away from the snow as it gets towards the end. And that's just gonna make it a bit more like catch free and easier to turn. All right. Um, uh, Joseph saying, going December 30th for the second time ever. I've watched all your beginner videos and I feel so confident. Awesome, Joseph, that's amazing, man. Uh, December 30th, that's my birthday too. So, man, I hope you have a, have a good day. Uh, Luke says, tips for building confidence to hit jumps. Um, so I think the confidence with jumps actually comes from um, having the confidence to ride with more speed. So practice actually like using your edges to control your speed. So... Uh, each time you make a turn, really think about using your edges, maybe spraying some snow at the side and feeling like you're in control as you ride with speed. Um, then you can start to like actually practice some like side hit jumps, 
um, little things out, outside the park, maybe work on your ollie. And if you can ollie and land with some speed and then do a couple of speed checks to slow yourself down, um, I think that's how you start to build confidence for small jumps in the park. Uh, Wilbury with the super chat. Awesome, thanks for the support, man. Says, first stream I've caught in a while. Uh, heading up to Stevens Pass tomorrow. We're getting a bit of snow. Hope you guys are getting some of it up at Whistler as well. Uh, awesome, yeah, Wilbury, thanks for the support, man. But yeah, we are getting some snow the next like week as well, kind of for the next few days and into next week. So yeah, I think Stevens Pass and Whistler are kind of, we get similar weather, so that's, that's awesome. Um, have a great time tomorrow, man. And yeah, I miss uh, Stevens Pass, such a fun place to snowboard. All right, so one other announcement I wanted to make. Um, so tomorrow, tomorrow, uh, I was gonna say tomorrow morning, but it uh, depends on where you are, but I'm, I'm uh, premiering a new video and it's from the Union Snowboard Binding Factory. Um, so it's set to premiere for 9 a.m. Pacific time, or I guess noon Eastern time. And uh, if you guys get the chance, uh, please check out that video. Um, I, I think I spent uh, five or six days um, traveling uh, to the Union uh, factory in Italy, um, getting to know the factory, making the video. And uh, yeah, it was just a really fun project and experience. And I put a lot of um, just time into the video. So I hope you guys will check it out. It's kind of a different video on the channel. So like a, a factory tour. Um, I've actually, it's only the second one I've ever done. I also did one about the Capita Mothership Snowboard Factory a few months ago and doing the Union Factory Tour and creating a video about it, I think is uh, is different. So I hope you guys will check it out because it's um, a video I put, um, yeah, a lot of work into. But yes, premiering tomorrow. And if you guys like it, uh, let me know um, and drop a comment. And uh, if you guys don't like it, let me know as well. That'd be That'd be awesome to hear. Willow wants to know, what bindings should you pair with the Super DOA? Um, so the bindings I'm pairing with this year are the Union Stratus. So I think that's a pretty pretty good combo. All right, cool guys. Over 200 people watching. Let's do, uh, let's do a couple more questions. Nicholas saying, got the video not notification, so I'll be watching it when it goes live. Awesome. Yeah, I'm going to set my alarm too. I'm going to wake up at uh, early enough, um, 9, 9 a.m. It's, it's not too early, but yeah, I'm gonna be watching it too. So I'll see you, I'll see you on the live chat tomorrow morning. Uh, Chi Ming Chu with the super chat, thanks for the support, says, hey Kev, how important for a new learner um, have exact gear fit? Debating if I should lend my gear um, half size too big for my boots and three to five centimeters too long. Um, yeah, I think it's, it is really important, especially for a beginner to have the exact fit, especially for boots. Um, boots is like probably the most important thing to have like just the right fit. And because if your boots are too big, then you're, when you're going to like say stop or, or turn, then your, your heels are gonna start to lift out of your boots. So getting that like snug, uh, boot fit is the most important thing and I would say like if you are an, if you're new to snowboarding and You're gonna start buying gear um, Actually buying the boots is probably the first thing you want to do because having a good pair of your own boots um, Is just a good way good way to get started um, Andre's Curls with the super chat. Thanks for the support, man. Says, love your content. My girlfriend is learning to snowboard. She can heel and toe turn, but has trouble linking them, uh, particularly on slightly steeper sections. Any tips or words of encouragement? Um, awesome. Yeah, really good, really good question. Um, so I think that, I think one of the most, yeah, one of the most common problems with like linking the turns is, is almost trying to do it too quick. So like thinking thinking like, you know, 
you turn once and then going right into another turn and then right into another turn and trying to do it too quickly can actually, you start to get twisted and that's when you can start to catch an edge and, and fall, especially like on steeper, on steeper runs. Um, so my advice would be focus on making the turns a bit slower. So just like focusing on one turn, letting it come around and then once you get onto that new edge, actually just staying on it for a second and getting comfortable and then reset uh, before going into the next turn. So just by slowing your turns down a little bit, I think that helps you to like start to link them and have them have that get that rhythm going in the turns. So like let the heel turn come around nice and big and slow. And then as you get onto your toes, actually slow yourself down and like start to reset uh, before doing that like big and slow toe, toe turn and then getting onto the heels, slowing yourself down and resetting. So just like breaking the, even though you're starting to link, you're still like taking that little break to like reset and get in control before the next turn. Um, and then on steeper runs, I think the thing that can help people the most is to actually take your front hand and then reach like down towards the snow in front of you. So by like really reaching towards the snow, like down and towards the nose of your board, it helps to get your weight forward onto your front foot. And then with your weight more forward, it'll it'll allow you allow you to make a bit of a quicker turn on a steep run. Um, I know sometimes when the, the slope is steep, um, snowboarders kind of tend to lean backwards. And when you're leaning back, it's almost like impossible to make that turn. So by like reaching your front hand down towards the snow by the nose, just gets your weight forward and you can get that turn around. So yeah, maybe, maybe get her to try those two things. Um, slowing the turns down a bit, um, resetting, making them, making the turns a bit bigger and then reaching forward with that front hand for the steeper sections. Uh, but yeah, I hope that helped out, man. And, uh, yeah, good luck. Have fun out there. Thanks for the, thanks for the support. All right. Yeah. Tons of good questions, guys. Thanks so much. Uh, Kiefer says, I just got the Capita DOA 2021 for this year. What are your thoughts on that board? Yeah, it's like a really solid board that can almost, it's uh, it's good just about anywhere. Like it's a great resort board for like carving on the slopes. It's a little bit stiffer. So I think that stiffness makes it, uh, makes it stable. And it's also got some like flat to rocker sections towards the tips, uh, making it, um, feel not too aggressive. So it's like a camber board, but then towards the tips, it's less aggressive. So it gives you some control without being too catchy. So I really like that. And for the park, it's a little bit stiffer than like a, a you know, most park boards for like new park riders could probably use a softer board. But if you're not super into park, then um, that board is just great for riding the whole mountain. Uh, and it's also a board you can take it into the powder as well. And it's not like gonna be as good as a pure powder board, but because it because the profile, the camber is not overly aggressive, um, you can still ride through powder with it. So um, yeah, a good kind of um, all around board. And yeah, m the board I'm probably gonna ride mostly, most of the time this year, I don't know if it's back there. Oh yeah, there it is is the Capita Super DOA. So a kind of similar board, some similar features, um, some things are different, but um, yeah, a good, a good all around board. Okay. Yeah, let's do, let's check out one more question. Uh, Dylan says, use your front foot when transitioning. It'll make them quicker and more controlled. Nice. Yeah. Using like, um, you know, when you're learning to snowboard, there's, there are like so many things happening. Uh, it's hard to, uh, learn them all at once, but yeah, once you start to actually use your front foot and your front knee to help you steer, uh, that can definitely help with the turns as well. Uh, Pierce says, can skateboarding help my switch? Uh, definitely. Um, 
skateboarding helps in snowboarding so much. Uh, that's one thing beginners can do is actually practice. Um, if you, if you do skateboard or if you're interested at all, like skateboarding is such a great way to get good at, uh, at snowboarding. And definitely if you can ride switch on a skateboard, you can definitely do it on a snowboard because it's, um, yeah, it's, uh, it's skateboarding is so much harder than snowboarding. Uh, Reds saying, let's support SBC. Hit the like button. Awesome. Thanks, Reds. All right. Let's, uh, let's see. Let's do one more. Uh, Bad Rider says, Kev, do a walkthrough of your room. I need some ideas for storage. <laughs> nice, man. Yeah, this... Uh, I don't want to turn the camera because like all back here be behind the camera is like a disaster. But I do have like how many? One, two, three, four, five. So I have like a five, um, like a five level shelf with like clear, pa uh, clear plastic bins on each shelf. So it's like somewhat, it's somewhat organized, but there's a lot of like snowboard gear and camera stuff all, all back in there. Uh, Dima says, hey, Kev, I've been riding for three years now and every year I experience knee pain. Um, I tried everything to make the pain go away, but I can't figure it out. Have you ever had bad knee pain? Um, Dima, yeah, I'm sorry to hear that. I have actually at times had knee pain. And for me, I think it was from different reasons. I think in the past I may have done like overdone like some like really long hikes have actually hurt my knees. And I've so that's, I think, where mine has come from. But yeah, I don't know. It's just, it's tough to say because I know, you know, different people have just different things going on. But one thing you can do is like try adjusting your stance. Like I know that the angles like that some people have may feel good for some people, but for other people, different angles work. So try to play, play around with your stance angles. Um, I know it's like common is like negative 15 and plus 15, but you can experiment from there. You can bring it into like 12 and 12 or nine and nine, um, stuff like that, that might help. Um, or it could be your boots. Maybe try finding some boots that have like some cushier soles, something that's got some more, some more um, cushioning to it that might help. Um, I know for myself, like a setup that I have, so I have Adidas, um, like tactical, uh, boots and the, the sole is actually like very like cushiony. Um, it's actually like the same sole in Adidas shoes. And so I don't know, something like that may help or even bindings. Like a lot of snowboard bindings nowadays actually come with like really, um, soft and cushy, um, bases. So, uh, I don't know, try, try a few different things, but yeah, I'm sorry to hear about that. That's uh, that's a, a rough thing to deal with. Um, Luke wants to know, how do you wear your goggles under your helmet? Um, easy. I just do put the beanie on. Actually, first I, I put my balaclava on, then the beanie and then a, then my goggles. And then I just put my helmet on. That's it. Um, but that's it. But, uh, yeah, just to wrap it up, guys, thank you guys for coming to hang out. Um, again, if you want an SPC, uh, beanie it's linked in the description i just got them in today 100 and 180 black beanies so if you guys want one uh check out the description and also um a big video one that i've uh, put a lot of work into the union binding factory um tour video is going up uh tomorrow morning so i hope you guys will check that out and yeah i hope you guys found these tips helpful for uh beginner snowboarding um, I know a lot of uh, beginners are out there. There's like thousands of people learning to snowboard every month. So if you're learning, I hope these helped. Uh, there's also a link in the description to the beginner snowboard playlist where there are lots of videos that help you guys. Um, or if you're, if you're teaching somebody to snowboard, um, it's a great tool um, as well. 
And yeah, hope you guys hope you guys have fun out there learning to snowboard. Again, big shout out to everyone in the live chat. Thank you guys for hopping on. Thanks to everyone for the support and uh, the super chats. Uh, but yeah, thanks again, guys. And I will uh, I'll see you guys in the next one soon.